Mr. Sumner, I have read your speech twice over carefully. It is a libel on South Carolina and a libel on Mr. Butler, who is a relative of mine. What you say? Oh, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. Mm, what you say? Mm, that it's all for the best, cause it is. What you say? Oh, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. Mm, what you say? Mm, that it's all for the On May 22, 1856, a meeting of the United States Senate turned violent. Two days after giving his speech on the crisis in Bleeding Kansas, Charles Sumner was caned down by one of his fellow senators. I'm here today to tell you about the important event that was the caning of Charles Sumner. This event was so important because it reflected the divisive nature of American politics at the time. The divisions present during the caning were the same divisions that were present during the American Civil War. According to the United States Senate webpage, Senator Charles Sumner was an anti-slavery Northern Republican. In his speech, Crime Against Kansas, which he gave two days prior to his caning, he discussed whether or not the territory of Kansas should enter the United States as a slave state or a free state. This was such a hot button topic at the time because Kansas was known as Bleeding Kansas. It was called Bleeding Kansas because civilians were fighting, physically fighting, over whether or not their territory should be a free or slave state. Civilians on both sides of the conflict, pro-slavery and anti-slavery, were already fighting intensely, but fighting only got worse after the idea of popular sovereignty was proposed by Stephen Douglas. This idea stated that the citizens of the territory should be able to decide for themselves whether or not the territory should enter as a free or slave state. This decision would be made by a vote. But when voting time came around, Northerners and Southerners alike began to flood into the territory and illegally vote for their side. This voter fraud was such a huge problem that it was brought up in the Senate. So, enter Charles Sumner and his crime against Kansas speech. Sumner's actual speech was an inflammatory one. In it, he accused two other senators, Stephen Douglas of Illinois and Andrew Butler of South Carolina, of committing a crime against Kansas. According to James McPherson in his book, Battle Cry of Freedom, The Civil War Era, Southerners were enraged by Sumner's speech, and even some of the people in his own Republican Party were upset by it. But the Southerners took it as a blow to their Southern honor. Some went so far as to say that they would have dueled him if he was their equal, but since he was not, they wouldn't. Though there were no duels, Preston Brooks, a distant cousin of Andrew Butler, who was insulted in the speech, was deeply upset by these remarks made by Sumner. Two days later, Sumner was sitting at his desk in the Senate writing letters when Preston Brooks approached him. When Brooks approached, he said, Mr. Sumner, I have read your speech twice over carefully. It is a libel on South Carolina and it is a libel on Mr. Butler, who is a relative of mine. After saying this, he began beating Sumner over the head with his cane. According to James McPherson, Brooks beat Sumner over the head with his gold-topped cane 30 times. Sumner's legs were trapped under his Senate desk, which was bolted to the floor, and he was only able to break free from it when he ripped it off from its bolts. But Preston Brooks kept attacking him even after he was free from his desk. Sumner, who did survive the attack, was left lying in a pool of his own blood on the Senate floor and had to be carried out by some of his fellow senators. While the speech itself was already very divisive, the caning was even more so. Abolitionists saw Sumner as a martyr due to his injuries, and Southern Democrats praised Brooks for his actions. Some even went so far as to send him canes, one of which was inscribed with the phrase, hit him again. This of course did not bode well for the increasing political divisions in the United States. Southerners said that their honor was still insulted by Sumner's speech, and Northerners wanted Brooks to be punished for his heinous crime. In the end, though, Brooks was never actually charged with anything and was only required to pay a $300 fine. Sumner eventually did return to the Senate, but was plagued by his injuries for the rest of his life. 
In the end, Kansas stayed bleeding Kansas, and the territory was not admitted as a state, a free one at that, until 1861. And unfortunately, the divisions that were present during the caning of Charles Sumner only widened, setting a course for the sectional split that led to the American Civil War.